Welcome back to Honest News. Brothers and sisters, if you can hear sound of drums in the background and chanting going on, that's because we have some neighbors that uh, are Indians. And uh, so I apologize for the noise in the background. But I want you to understand, brothers and sisters, that it's the United States is becoming the wild, wild west all over again. Are you listening? We're seeing the uprise of civil war coming in the United States. And as I was thinking on these things this morning, how the storm is brewing how it's really beginning to kick up in the United States and around the world, that there's one thing that we must do, and that is to keep our eyes on Jesus. Amen? And I believe the only way that we're going to be able to keep our eyes on him is to listen to him. Matthew, the 14th chapter, and beginning with verse 24. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. Let me read that verse again to you. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. We'll be right back after this. We'd like to take a moment to thank our listeners sincerely for your support of Honest News Network Ministry. If you're interested in supporting this ministry, please use the information provided. Thank you. Each prayer I pray, each step I take, I Now, I had a completely different message prepared for this morning, but I really felt from the Lord to share this with you. I felt this was the word for God's people today. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. How many know that the wind of this world. Everything that's going on in this world is contrary. It's against God's people. I may know that. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled. And they said, it is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. Peter is questioning 
as many times in his life he questions the Lord. The Lord just said, "This it is I, be not afraid. And Peter said, if it be thou, if it's really you. What Peter is saying is, I know it's really you if I can come out there and walk on the water with you. If I can come out there and walk on the water with you, then I know it's you, Lord. If it be thou. In the midst of the storm, when the wind is blowing contrary, brothers and sisters, in this hour, you and I need to hear his voice. Are you listening? And not only hear his voice, but we need to keep our eyes on him. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the word of the Lord today. Lord, that we pray it will not fall on deaf ears, but that your people will be encouraged, inspired of the Holy Ghost, Lord, that they will be filled this day with confidence in their God. Not confidence in themselves, Lord, but confidence in you. We pray that you bless and that you anoint as we minister your word, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. And Jesus said to Peter, Come. One word. That's all he said. Come. And I'd like to ask you a question in the midst of the storm today. Can you hear his voice? Can you hear him bidding you? The scripture says, draw near to God and he'll draw near to you. How many know in this hour the church is hesitating? We know the Lord is saying to come unto him. Many times in scripture, in Jesus' ministry, he said, come. Right? Come unto me, all ye that are of a heavy laden. Right? All you that have a burden, come to me. Cast your care on me. Learn of me. I'm meek and lowly in heart. You'll find rest unto your souls. Come unto me, all you that are athirst, and drink of the water of life freely. Can you hear him in the midst of the storm? Can you hear him bidding you to come to him? Many times we see this in the scripture, the principle of this in the scripture, where the Lord is bidding inviting come come to the marriage right we see in the scripture where there were those that made light of it he said come and when peter was come down out of the ship he walked on the water to go to jesus how many times in your experience have you walked on the water no, you didn't walk on the literal water or the physical water, but you walked on his word. Amen? He gave you faith from his word. Faith comes by hearing and hear, hearing by the word of God. He gave you faith, and you were walking in faith. You, you were walking on the word. You were trusting in the Lord. You had confidence in the Lord. And even in the midst of the storm, you were walking on the word. Amen. But something happened. Be honest, something happened. And when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. When he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. 
Even though Peter hesitated at the beginning, there's not a whole lot of hesitation now as he's beginning to sink. Isn't that the way it is for you and I when we get in trouble? There's not a whole lot of hesitation. Lord, I need your help. But when it comes to drawing near to God, we hesitate. We stand afar off sometimes. Are you listening, people? This is no hour for you and I to be standing afar off. This is no time for you and I to be following the Lord afar off. This is no time for you and I to be drawing back, to be falling away with those that are falling away. This is the time of the apostasy. Many are falling away in this hour, but this is no time to be falling away. Can you hear his voice in the midst of the storm? Can you hear him saying to you, come, come unto me, come, come unto me? Don't be afraid. Fear not. If Peter could have only listened and continued to come to the Lord. See, two things had to happen. He had to listen, continue to listen, but he had to keep his eyes on Jesus. He took his eyes off Jesus. Many times you and I do the same thing. In the storms, when we feel like things are getting bad, how many know with things that are going on in the United States, things are getting bad? Amen. When your officials and the leaders of the country and those in Congress and those in the Senate and different ones are speaking out and saying the country's in trouble. Are you listening? When you hear a retired general saying we're in trouble, you're hearing those that are saying that, the, that terrorism is on the rise like never before, that our country is in trouble, we're in peril. When you hear them talking about how they're coming across the border, you can begin to get your eyes on the storm. You can start looking and focusing on the problem instead of the promise. You can get your eyes off Jesus if you're not careful. If you're not staying in the word, if you're not staying in prayer, how many know the Bible says he'll give you a peace? He'll give you a peace that surpasses all understanding. The peace of God that surpasses all understanding. The scripture says, let the peace of God rule in your hearts. And you, are like, uh, you and I, like Peter, we could take our eyes off the Lord because we get our eyes on the problem. We get our eyes on the storm. Folks, I'm going to tell you, I'm just going to be honest with you. The things that are going on in this country, if you, if, you, if you don't stay in the spirit, if you don't stay in prayer and stay in the word, you can begin to get in the flesh and begin to be fearful, hearing and seeing the things that are coming upon the earth. The scripture says men's hearts are going to fail them. That's heart attacks, folks. That's men having heart attacks. Are you listening? But if, we, if you and I will continue to listen to his voice in the storm, if we'll continue to hear his voice, obey his voice, if we'll continue to keep our eyes on Jesus, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, if we'll keep our eyes on him, amen, he will bring us through. Not only the storm, but he'll bring us through to the other side. Amen. But we got to listen. We got to obey his voice. And I want to ask you again, can you hear his voice, that calm, still voice in the storm? There's no fear in his voice. There's no anxiousness. He's not worried. He's not troubled. He's in total, complete control. Listen, people, he's walking not only on the water, he's walking on the storm. He's walking in the storm, on the storm. Are you listening? Only he can bring the calm to the storm. 
But until he brings the calm to the storm, you and I must keep our eyes on him. We must continue to listen to him, to hear his voice in the storm. I'll ask you again, can you hear his voice? Can you hear him saying to you, come, come unto me, be not afraid. Look, they didn't all get out of the ship. They didn't all listen to his voice. Amen. Many times we want to look down on Peter because he failed to keep his eyes on Jesus. He failed to obey, to listen to the Lord's voice. He hesitated. But listen, at least he got out of the ship. How many know the ship's going down? Amen? Yeah, the scripture says Jesus got on the ship. He got on that boat, and it didn't go down. But how many know there's something better than being in this ship in the midst of the storm with a contrary wind? If any man be in Christ, how many know Jesus Christ is the ark of safety? Not what Noah built. That's not going to keep you safe in the fire that's coming. The heavens and the scripture says the elements are going to burn with fervent heat. Amen? The scripture says heaven and earth shall pass away. Jesus said heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. You and I can't afford to be in a boat trusting in the natural. We have got to be in Christ, in the word. He is the word, people. When he returns in judgment, he's called the word of God. We need to know him as the word. We need to come to the place where we no longer hesitate, where we no longer question him, where we know his voice and we obey his voice. Amen? That we hear his command and obey him as soldiers, as warriors in his army. He is the captain of the Lord of hosts, brothers and sisters. He's not just a lowly Nazarene. Amen? He's the captain of the Lord of hosts. And we need to hear his voice, and we need to heed his voice. We need to obey him in the storm. Now, brothers and sisters, there's something even better than being in the storm, dealing with that contrary wind. Why did Jesus send them? Why did he send them away without himself? Why did he stay behind We're not going to deal with that in this message, but think about that. Meditate on that. Why did Jesus send the disciples to the other side, knowing there would be a storm? Why did he do it? You say, well, he did it because he wanted to test them. But there's a bigger problem, underlining problem why Jesus sent them ahead of himself. After all, Jesus is the one that said, follow me. So why would he send them ahead of himself? Yes, he was teaching them a lesson, but why did they need to learn this lesson? There's a reason, folks. One day I will give you a message on this. The reason why Jesus sent the disciples to the other side without himself. Why he didn't go with them. There's a reason why he didn't go with them. He was teaching them a lesson. But what was the lesson? Remember, Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. When you think you're the leader, when you think that you're the one that's leading, he'll let you lead all right. But you become a blind leader leading the blind. Paul the Apostle said, follow me as I follow Christ. He's always the leader, brothers and sisters. And when you get that twisted, you're in trouble. 
He must be the one that's leading you and I. And that's what's wrong with the church today. They're not following him. Amen. The church as a whole today is not following Jesus. They're hesitating. They're not following him. And how many know he's not stopping? He's continuing. So if you're hesitating and you're lagging behind and he's continuing to move, you're going to be left behind. That's what I've been trying to tell you. For several years now, I've been trying to warn you. The church as a whole is going to be left behind because they're not willing to follow the Lord to walk with him as Enoch walked with him, and he was not, for God took him. How many know in the Greek, actually in the Hebrew, the word where it says God took Enoch, the word took in the Hebrew has to do with a marriage, a union. Enoch was not, for God took him. And God's about to take his bride from this earth, those that are walking with him, not those that are hesitating, those that are getting messed up in the storm, those that are being affected by the contrary winds of doctrine, those winds of the world that are against us. There's something better, people, than being out there in that storm. I will just say this, but I won't go into detail. Did you know there's a place by him? There's a place with him? The scripture says Jesus was up in the mountain praying. And he saw them out there toiling. There's a place with Jesus where you can see others toiling where you can see the others out there in the storm. There's a place, people, an advantage. There's a place, a high place with God, where you don't have to be in the storm, where you don't have to be out there where the others are, amen, where they are toiling against a wind that's contrary. There's a place where you can walk with him. God bless you.